idea of standing here in front of you, trying to deliver a message perfectly was scary. I'm not a public speaker. Even though as a teacher, I speak in public every day. I can't believe I would have missed this exact moment because I could not believe that a message could be worthy of sharing if it was not delivered perfectly. And I'm sure I'm not the only one because failure is scary. Moving out of your comfort zone is scary. Just a few years ago, our lives were very different to what we have today. When I say we, I'm talking about 46.9% of the world population. Women. 120 years ago, we were not even considered citizens. We could not vote or go to school. We could not own property or have a job outside our homes. We could not stand up and publicly share ideas, just as I'm doing here today. But how did things change so fast? Let me guide you through a very quick historical journey. I hope I don't bore you, but as a history teacher, I believe there's no topic that can be fully understood without the historical background of it. Regarding our voting rights that you now take for granted, you would be surprised to know that it was only 120 years ago that New Zealand became the first nation to grant women the right to vote. In Latin America, the first one was Ecuador, but that was only 94 years ago. And Portugal, a country you might consider progressive today, granted women the right to vote 47 years ago. And in Saudi Arabia, women my age have been voting only for the past eight years. So as soon as we achieve our voting rights, other doors began to open, such as the right to take our education to a professional level. However, career options were reduced to teaching, nursing, assistance, seamstress, being a doctor or an engineer, that was completely out of question. Universities such as Harvard opened the field of medicine for women until 1945. And these and many other historical events have led us to the rights we can now enjoy. However, instead of enjoying those rights, we're ruining it by trying to be perfect. Perfectionism is the search for flawlessness. It's setting unreachable standards in our lives, in our professional, social, in all our lives. According to a study of girl guiding in the United Kingdom, perfection tendencies are more common in women than in men. Girls as young as seven years old try hard to excel in everything they do in order to please adults around them, such as parents, teachers, or caregivers. Here, in our school, Seven out of ten elementary girls express that they would feel proud of themselves if they were the best ones in their classes academically, or if they were the best ones in their extracurricular activities. Come on. Girls as young as this should place no ifs in order to feel proud of themselves. They should know that they're worthy of self-pride today. Not if, not when, but now. And if this is a reality in elementary school, it's no wonder that when girls reach middle and high school, the need for perfectionism accentuates. In that very hard stage of life where everything is uncertain, perfectionism gives teenage girls a false sense of control. Five out of 10 of my own students feel the need to be the best ones in their classes academically. Seven out of 10 try to please their parents through academic achievement. And even when they rate their academic achievement as high, they're still not proud because they can believe it can always be better. These numbers are ridiculous. Imagine living under so much pressure all the time. It's no wonder anxiety has reached levels we've never seen before in teenagers. Girls, even if who you're trying to please are your parent, as a parent, I can tell you, what they really want is for you to be happy. There's only one person expecting you to be perfect, and that person is you. And even when high school and college phases are hard, they're transitory. However, we keep carrying perfection tendencies into our professional and personal lives, and those stages are long-term. At work, women often feel the need to prove they deserve a position they have. They would not dare apply for a promotion if they feel they do not have 100% of the qualifications. Whereas men, men will apply even if they know they have only 50%. Women struggle hard to balance the time they spend at work with their other roles in life. I've seen my friends in the corporate world struggle with not missing an important work meeting and not missing an important birthday party because missing any of those 
fills them with guilt of not having accomplished something that was expected from them. And in our personal lives as mothers, we carry this into everything we should be as mothers. We spend hours creating picture-perfect childhoods for our kids far away from discomfort. Among my mom friends, I found that five out of ten believe that their kids' success depends entirely on them. Seven out of ten are always struggling, trying to have time for their family, but also time for everything else they have to do. 73% of the moms interviewed confess that they're always constantly questioning themselves if they're being a good mom. Some of them weekly, and some of them even daily. Let me stop right here. Moms, you're doing a great job. Trust me. Better yet, trust yourselves. So what's next? Let's change our mindsets so that the next generation of girls and women can enjoy the best of both worlds, a world with the rights they deserve and a world with the rights they can enjoy without the fear of messing up, without the fear of failure, without the pressure of being perfect. Elementary girls, it's okay if you're not chosen every time for everything. It's okay if you're not in the first line of your dance recital. Dance your heart out in the last row. Teenage girls, run for class president and lose. Apply for your dream college, even if there's a big chance you get rejected. Let's look at your report card with pride, even if they're not straight A's. Be proud of yourselves today. Women, let's ask for a day off if you need a break. Let's go for that promotion, even if you don't know you're going to get it. Let's go every day to work, trying to give our best, but without pretending our best has to be perfect. Mothers, let's teach our daughters the beauty of imperfection. Let's stop fooling ourselves, making believe we can actually give our kids a perfect nutrition, a perfect childhood, perfect memories, perfect experiences. Let's stop making motherhood a burden. And I have one last confession to make. I'm glad I did not give up on this. Because even though I made many mistakes, mispronounced words, skipped some ideas, or spoke a little too fast like I usually do, I can now tell you for sure that the secret to perfection is exactly the opposite. Thank you. <laughs>